show you the basics. So going to Finder, under Finder, we can find all our applications right here. It's gonna be your third option. And this is where all your apps are gonna be at. So let me just open this up. These are all the default apps that you guys get with your Mac. There's nothing more. Now there is a folder here. So if I go to utilities, there's gonna be more stuff in here. So just in case there is a folder within where you guys can see even more stuff. But generally speaking, we're taking a look at just your apps here. And I'm just gonna go through them really quick so you guys get a hand of what's what. So first of all, Pages, that's like Microsoft Word. Numbers, it's like Excel. Keynote would be the exact same thing as PowerPoint. iMovie, just to edit videos, which is like Premiere, for example. Uh, GarageBand, you would be editing audio, well, creating music as well there. Then you have QuickTime Player, which you use to play things. You can also record your screen with that. Right here, Apple TV, Time Machine. Time Machine is something that's really good to set up. I do have a separate video about that because for that, you need to buy an external hard drive. Once you guys get an external hard drive, look into the video that I have about time machines. That's a whole thing and it's really great to use. Anyways, Apple TV. So from that hub, you guys can play movies, TV shows and all that stuff. So again, that's a hub. It's gonna take you into channels that you guys can subscribe to in order to play all these things or even buy movies and anything like that. And the last main thing I'm gonna show you would be your mail. You guys can just adding your Hotmail, Gmail, all your accounts under there. So you guys can just answer all your emails in only one app. If you guys have an iPhone or anything like that, it would be the same thing pretty much. Anyways, that's a quick look into the apps that come pre-installed on your Mac already. If you guys want to download more apps, you can do it from the App Store, but not all the apps that you may want to install on your Mac will be in the App Store. That's fine. Just go ahead and go into Safari. So here's Safari. That would be your web browser and you can download any from there as well. It's just gonna be a slightly different process, but regardless, they're all gonna end up in your applications folder as well. Which by the way, if you guys do want to download any apps from the App Store, you do need your Apple ID. So if you didn't create one for any reason, now would be the time to do it. Anyways, next up, what you should know is on the top right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see your time. If you click anywhere here, and you're gonna see this because this is the first time you're opening this up. You guys can modify this as much as you want. So I'm just gonna click on that X and then we're gonna see all these things. You don't need this. You guys can take off and modify this as much as you like. So if uh, you just scroll down, so with two fingers, just uh, scroll down, you're gonna see this where it says edit widgets. If you don't scroll down, you're not gonna see this by the way. Uh, click on edit widgets. And then from here, we can go on and add any widgets or take out any widgets. They're pretty easy to take out. So right now that we clicked on edit widgets, we can go on and delete any of these. And that's just by going on into this right here on the top left hand side, clicking on it, and that's gonna delete it. So let's say we delete everything. There we go. We can just drag and place any of them in here. So here are all the widgets that I could add. And no, you don't need to delete them all in order to add any. I'm just showing you how to delete widgets. But to add any ones, any widget for that matter, just click on the widget first, then see which one, which look you like. So it could be like something really small, which looks like so. It would be something more extensive, such as this one, really big. You can also add photos, for example. You can add in reminders. That's gonna be useful for, I think, most people. Uh, weather, depending where you live, it's gonna be very important. And then there's stocks and all that other stuff. So we can add in pretty much anything. Battery is very important actually, because then you can see the battery of your Mac. Although we can also see that up here anyways. But this one tells you what percentage. So it's kind of nicer to see it that way. Plus let's not forget that any other batteries that you hook up to your Mac or connect it, such as any headphones, wireless headphones, you would see the batteries here as well. So that's kind of nice. So again, right here, you guys can see all the widgets that you can add, weather, tips, stocks, shortcuts, screen time, so many, so many things right here under widgets. We can go into all widgets, it's gonna show us every single thing and every single type of view for each one of them. So we can add them right here on the side. So again, I'm just scrolling through so you guys can see everything that you could add. The only one that I wouldn't add is shortcuts. I see that kind of a waste, but it's all up to you guys. Anyways, so that's how you guys can modify this. Let me just click out. We're gonna leave it as is. 
we're gonna go ahead and put okay that's just because of the weather now let's say you guys want to keep your widgets on the screen the entire time so you don't want to click here and just have to click there you guys can actually move these widgets onto your screen to be there every single time you turn on your mac so and all you have to do is click on it drag it onto your desktop it's that simple so click on it drag it to your desktop if there's something missing from here that you don't want same thing you can just go ahead and get it from here so it's just a time i can drag it on here and from there i could drag it on later on if i want to i can drag it on here on my desktop and that's it so now i don't have to click there in order to see my widgets i can actually move them around in certain areas not everywhere on my mac and i can keep them there so i can keep these here forever and i can move them anytime that i want so again they could be in the middle of my screen or almost anywhere on my screen and if I want to delete them, so let me just get that out of the way. I just like, clicked on it by mistake. I can just go into edit widgets again. And then you guys see that minus sign? Yep, on the top left hand side, just click on it and you got rid of it. Or yeah, I could just move those back into here as well on the right hand side. So that's how you guys can mess around with widgets on your Mac. Now for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that stuff, the quick way would be on the top right hand side. We're gonna see this. Just click on it and you're gonna see all of these options. So from here we have our Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, focus. That's just so you guys don't get any thing popping up on your screen telling you, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. You guys can just set it up. So uh, nothing gets in your way. Play music, sound, display. You guys can mirror your screen, but that's another video, a little bit more advanced, airdrop, you might be using this a lot if you guys have other Apple products especially because using Bluetooth, you guys can just airdrop things to other devices. So I can transfer a picture to my Mac or a picture from my Mac to my phone using airdrop, for example, or to my tablet. But again, that's just another video. It's actually pretty easy because for airdrop, all you guys have to do is go into Finder. And then from here, there's airdrop. I can find anything that uh, is using AirDrop and just drag it onto that person, for example. But again, another video, another day. So right now I just showed you the basics for your Mac. Uh, in order to add any emails to your Mac, all you guys have to do is just go here into your mail and you can add them there. You don't need to, however. So keep in mind that your email is online. So you guys could access that throughout Safari. It's just a web browser. So you guys could go to gmail.com and just hit up your emails from there as well. You don't need to go into there, but if you like to keep something in an app, you guys could set this up. Setting it up is really easy. All you guys have to do is click on it. And then from here, it's gonna ask you right away, what do you want to import? So it could be our Google account, going to continue. Then just type in your password, all your information, and there you go. So your email, it's gonna ask you for password, gonna add it on, and you're gonna be done. So it's gonna be that easy actually to add anything into your mail. But again, that's not something that everybody uses. Feel free not to. And as I mentioned before, your main browser would be Safari, but you guys can download Google Chrome if you like. And to do that, all you guys have to do is just go here and type in Google Chrome and just download it. And yeah, you would download it from here and not the App Store. There's actually a ton of apps that you would download it from here and not the App Store. Although for some of them, you do have the option to go into the App Store and download it from there. Others, you don't have to. You can just go right here, and it's going to ask you if you guys want to download. It's going to be, how do you know this is a legit one? Just look at that up here. It's supposed to say something like .com, like google.com, and then it's going to tell you Chrome. That's how you know it's the official one and not an app that's being hacked by somebody and trying to get people to download. So that's how you guys can make sure something's legit online. Just look where you're downloading it from. Because sometimes the very first option that you guys see would be an ad and those ads are sketchy sometimes. So that's how you guys would do that. I know a lot of people like Google Chrome, that's why I'm mentioning it. But you guys feel free just to use Safari. Safari's fine, that's my main thing. That's what I use. But anyways, these are the very basics with your Mac. This should get you started. If you guys have specific questions, let me know. So one of the last things I'm gonna show you, and that's because this is a MacBook that I'm showing you on, even if it wasn't a MacBook, let's say this was an iMac or anything with a bigger screen, this is useful because this down here could be taking up your space for no reason. So you go into your system settings. So again, bottom right hand side, system settings, open it up. 
And then from here, just type in doc like I did right now. And you're going to see this first option, go into it. And I want to show you this. You can make this as big or small as you like. So you guys can see how small it goes. I wouldn't make it small. I would make it medium size. But here's something that a lot of people don't do. And it's to magnify it. So let me just zoom in on what I'm actually doing here. And what I'm going to do is this. What will this do? I'm going to bring it up here so you guys can see a little bit more. Once I scroll through it, it's going to magnify what I'm going to select. And the reason why you might want to turn on this is because this dock right here, we can hide it. So it doesn't take space on your screen. And that's this option right here. Automatically hide. Just turn that on. And then you guys can see it disappeared. Let me just on click. And once I scroll down with my mouse, it's going to appear. So every time I want to actually open anything up here, I'm going to see it. But if I just scroll up, it's going to disappear. So that's good. And you guys can actually even make the top part of your Mac disappear. So even you have even more screen, but that I wouldn't personally do because your time's up there and there's things that you want quick access to. So you don't really want this hidden and then, then having to go up to just be what's up here, but you can, that's an option too in system preferences. I do have a separate video about that, but not something I recommend. However, this part I do highly recommend. And since we're taking a look at this, I'm going to show you how to delete these things. And we're just going to delete them from here, from the dock, not delete the app itself. So let's say if I take this out, if I just drag it out, it's going to say remove. There we go. So it's no longer here. However, the app still exists. I didn't delete it. I just took it out from there. So if I go into my applications, it's still going to be here. However, again, if I would do want to get something back there, if I want to add anything to my dock, I can just grab it from here and drag it down. So for example, something that's not down there would be weather. So I can just drag it down here and put it there. Actually, I think it was there. So let's drag something else like boys. I'm going to drag it down and place it here. Actually, I can place it anywhere really. But for now, we're just going to place it in between these two. I'm going to let it go. And there we go. So again, that's how you guys can add anything onto your dock. Or you guys can remove anything from your dock as well. Just by going like that, go up a little bit, let go of it. And that's how you guys can remove. So I'm going to show you that one more time. For reminders, for example, remove. For this, remove. So this guys delete anything from there. All right, so if you guys want to delete an app, um, it has to be a deletable app, for example, such as Keynote. You guys can right click on it, move to trash. That's your third option, and that's gonna get rid of it. That's one way. Another way would be to click on it, press command delete, or the third option would be to just drag it onto your trash bin. And that's how you guys can uninstall password and done there we go so that's how you guys can uninstall any app obviously we have to empty out that trash bin just like you delete any file there are apps out there that help you delete any apps from here for your mac and that's because they find usually folders or anything like that that's associated with the app itself which is good when they're bigger apps out there and there's some really complicated apps such as adobe uh, which you actually need to download an app to delete Adobe itself. So that's different. That's a different video again, but that's a particular case for most apps. All you guys have to do is just drag them there. And there's an app that's called app delete that I use. I, I suggest using that as well because it finds other folders that are associated with the particular program that you're using. And that's going to help you out. However, I no longer show that app anymore because people think I'm advertising and I'm not. That's just an app that I use, but you don't have to. You can just drag your apps to your trash bin, type in your password if you have one for your Mac, press OK, and you're done. Or press Command Delete on top of it, password again, OK, and done. So that's how you can uninstall things here on your Mac. It's much easier than a PC, I know. It almost makes it sound like not real. Because on PC, you have to go through your settings and then do it from there on installing an, a program and right here on mac we even call them apps instead of programs but anyways just empty out your trash bin and you're good to go anyways those are the bare basics for your mac go ahead and have fun with it i want to teach you one more thing before we end this video and that's how to change your background 
uh, it's actually pretty easy. Just go ahead and tap with two fingers. You're gonna see this, change wallpaper, do it from there, that's a quick way. Another way, from your system settings, just type in wallpaper, change wallpaper, and then from here you guys are gonna see a bunch of options. So, we can go and type this one in, we can try this one out. They're gonna change as you click on them, and then you can select whichever one you want. So right now, we're just gonna leave it there for now. And I want to highlight that you can download any other ones as well. And you can add in your own photos too. So right here you have that option to add photo. But you don't really need to do that from here. If you have your own picture, you can also right click on it. And it's going to give you the option to make it your wallpaper. So it's going to be that easy to change wallpaper right here on Mac. And that would be actually it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.